we all have beautiful stories to tell but not all of us have that innate talent time and tenacity to write and therefore we have authors people's voice warmly welcome to its viewers on third season this season we got for you all plethora of authors and writers who will enlighten us with their profound knowledge in varied aspects of lives authors are the ones who give life to the fiction characters they are the ones who give face to the expressionless emotions and they are the ones who keep feeding the hunger of readers just like me and today we have a fabulous personality with us who will share lots of lots of things related to writing and i can see that she is in the chat room so let's without wasting any time we'll invite her to join the chat how you all are doing it's been too much that we took break and uh, now we are with our third season of the voice yeah hello hello nasima sorry this is the first time i've done this um and so i was just getting sorted out and i couldn't hear you before but now i can so thank you and thanks for having me thanks for inviting me no problem it is my pleasure to have you on people's voice season 3 great before we dive into our conversation claudia let me just briefly introduce to our viewers a bit about yourself right um well i'm uh from a multicultural family and um my mother was german my father was french hungarian but born in the states so he was american i'm married to kuwaiti and having been here since 1979 i am also kuwaiti now um by marriage and by my heart and i'm a photographer and author uh, that's great great to hear that i have read your profile before having this conversation it's quite impressive i must say to go through your profile knowing so many things so many things that you have done in uh, in last few decades for kuwait in terms of writing and i have uh, drafted a small introduction for you if you don't mind can i just read it for our audience so that they get a brief idea about you right okay. okay so just how i started in writing and um uh, yeah. claudia i'll just give you give a short introduction to our viewers i have written, written it here from oh. your profile uh, uh, oh, all right super okay okay super sorry your voice is breaking up a little bit but i hope it's going to be clear okay uh, that's completely all right we can understand no problem oh okay. claudia sure. arashud she is an author and photojournalist she said she is from states uh, resides in kuwait from last few decades who had explored in and out of kuwait with utmost passion and love She has written several books about history of Kuwait, about uh, about Kuwait's culture, tradition. To name a few, would be what the camels said, a uh, set to Santa, Kuwait's age of sail, Kuwait before and after storm are the few books she has written about Kuwait. Being a multifaceted personality, apart from being a great author, she she is also a tour guide. for kuwait's national uh, kuwait historical places for local and international community groups she is also a supporter of touch of hope kuwait animal shelter since 2014 claudia wears many other social welfare hats the more i say the less it is today we will talk talk to her exclusively about her writing and about her experience as an author once again claudia welcome to people's voice season 3 thank you 
it's a it's my pleasure to have you oh thank you so much nasima thank you for inviting me thank you claudia as we are, we are done with the introduction i'm sure our viewers must have got a good idea about your background so let's dive into the writing process of yours uh, if you can brief us about from, from the time you concept conceptualize the idea to transform it into the writing how the process looks like sure um well first i start with research like thorough research which is so important i mean any author or a photojournalist has to be armed with the facts and information accurate information um and then i will go out and do uh, one or more interviews um i'll do my field work that'll include um a photo shoot and um then i'll start putting everything sort of into a um in, into um a plan and outline uh i've been writing for so long that i don't always put it in writing sometimes the outline is just in my head and okay. then uh i'll get to the computer if i'm not interrupted because i work from home which is sometimes challenging but um i can sit down sometimes and if i can you know just work flat out for a few hours maybe i can finish a piece but often it'll take several days um and i will you know go back sometimes it's good to leave it and then come back with fresh eyes and at the end of the process i always make sure that i proofread carefully and mm -hmm. i always fact check if i have even you know the slightest doubt about anything i want to make sure that everything is 100% accurate that's great and it looks it looks quite complicated and time consuming process to start with research keep writing sometimes it's saying wing as you rightly said or uh, as you are an experienced writer and then keep checking giving a break coming back with a fresh eye uh, it must be taking months and months to finish one book actually years <laughs> books books take years um because there's so much information to collect and it's such a long process and um yeah it's it's um it's almost like having a baby you know it's you feel like it's your baby by the time you've uh, you've launched it into the world and so really all of my books took years because there's so much research done behind them the children's book that i did um that didn't take quite as long but um yeah books are really uh, and books are just a labor of of love it's something that just takes over your whole life I, I, absolutely i'm sure it's like giving a part of you to uh, to something and then giving out to the world and when you want to give a part of you to the world you want it to be the best as much as possible exactly <laughs> exactly Claudia I have gone through the list of books you have written and I noticed that most of your books is about quake the subject the main subject of the book is about quake whether it's culture whether it's history whether it's tradition about research so what is the reason behind having the key subject quake right good question yeah um actually i've spent most of my adult life living and working in kuwait uh -huh. so kuwait is something that i know really well um something that i love and um also i find that so many facets of kuwait are not well documented so i find that things are crying out to be researched and and written about uh when i first came here i realized that this was a country that was in a a state of flux and that was changing so quickly and if i didn't record these things um in photographs and in writing this information um might be lost you know especially if you talk to the older kuwaitis um i've had the privilege to meet like the the last uh, master shipbuilder 
in Kuwait, and some of the last uh, Bedouin weavers and pearl divers, and uh, you know, and if no one sits with them and and records their stories, when these people are not with us anymore, that information is going to be lost. So that's what really compelled me to just um, capture as as much of this information as I could, and I still feel. That you know, there are so many stories in Kuwait that need to be told. Oh, oh, oh fantastic. It, it sounds quite interesting, especially when you are saying that you were interacting with people to know their lifestyle, their work details. And you rightly said, if we won't document it, we won't be having anything to refer back to. How was our olden days, the history, the time is yes. passing past and if we don't document it we will lose what all beautiful things we have in Kuwait rightly said yeah it's like you know in uh, in Japan i heard that you know they have like some of the older people who were the last people who practice a certain trade or or they are designated as national treasures and really you know when you look at the older generation here especially what they have experienced um from the time during the pre-oil era up to now they have seen changes that have made you know the country practically unrecognizable from the days of their youth until the until the present time so it's something really precious absolutely true talking to you i feel like going back and reading all the history uh history books of kuwait you you made it sound so interesting and i'm sure after people's voice gets over i'm going to grab one of your books first thank you <laughs> claudia talking uh, talking about uh, interaction with people it made me think being an author especially when you are into writing process how's your mm -hmm. day to looks like how how as an author your typical day looks like right okay another good question but actually i have no typical days um every day is different um sometimes i'm out collecting information i'm interviewing i'm taking pictures other days i'm working from home since i work as a freelance photojournalist now i have this luxury of being able to you know fit my writing around other things that that i'm doing um but from 1979 to 1983 i was working as the first um professional full-time female photojournalist in kuwait and at that time i was working like 6 even 7 days a week all kind of crazy hours but i loved it um so now um as i as you were saying i have a lot of charity projects and so every day is hectic and sometimes okay. i will fit in a, a writing project if i'm um stuck in traffic i'll start writing if i'm waiting in the bank or the doctor's office or whatever i've always got like pen and paper i'll start um scribbling away and then when i get back to the computer i've got something uh to start with oh, that that's nice you know, i was thinking so many authors when i study about authors uh, most of them said that uh, they have a particular time to write for example there are authors they are saying early morning when the world is sleeping it's pin drop silent the thought just flows so uh, and mm. it's uh, something what you have said is completely different i heard but it's quite interesting to know that authors can just uh, randomly write anywhere whenever they get time That's yeah nice. yeah my life is too chaotic for routine and so um, i just trained myself to write anytime and anywhere uh for me it's not i wouldn't say chaotic but i would say it's quite interesting it's not boring schedule that you have like you are doing different things different times and that keeps uh that helps you keep coming fresh ideas because you are just so many things hopefully yeah <laughs> i always have a long list of ideas you know it's like the problem is never having enough ideas is having enough time um that we struggle with if you are into multiple 
activities so one one must feel that uh, there is a lack of time yes definitely claudia as you are into writing world for decades now being an experienced writer what do you think that is an essential element for a writer if a, if a person wants to start his journey what do you uh, in, uh, what do you advise them what is the essential elements of writing right um i would say if you want to be a good writer you have to love reading and i saw from your bio that you're also an avid reader i mean if you love to read you'll never ever be bored and this really helps you to become a good writer and obviously the basics good grammar vocabulary and spelling um don't rely on spell check as people do and they get themselves into a big mess um you have to be able to recognize a good story and be able to tell it well or find an interesting angle about a topic that can seem very ordinary because if you dig into almost any subject you can find fascinating things and um for me that's why i i went into non-fiction because i see that like in the world around me there are so many incredible things that are much more um amazing than things that i could make up so that's why i love non-fiction but um for any kind of writing you have to have structure and flow obviously you have to have um a great beginning a middle and an end if you don't grab your reader you know ideally you grab them in that first sentence and if you haven't hooked them in the first paragraphs um most likely you can lose them and you shouldn't just go on and on with lots of fluff you kind of want to take the words and distill them into their essence and um also to be a good writer you should always be curious and just never stop learning excellent excellent i completely agree with you if one needs to start writing they have to be an avid reader they have to uh, speed up their reading habits and then the other yes. things will uh, uh, come together like flow yes. structure you will get lots of idea you will get the format how one needs to at least start with absolutely exactly yeah claudia i was going through the list of the books that you have written and contributed as well and i found so uh, title of the book it's quite interesting it grabbed my attention like that and purposely i didn't go and check the summary because i wanted to hear from you the book name is what the camel said to santa if you can quickly brief us what the book is all about and where we can find your books collection if someone wants to uh, buy a book after watching this interview then uh, where uh, where they can find it okay yeah thank you um well what the camel said to santa is a a children's book about kuwait's uh, desert environment and the animals that live there and um this one is i said i'm i'm basically a non-fiction writer but this one is fiction based on fact everything that happened in this book um all parts of the story actually took place but i've given the animals their voice to to tell the story and how it came about is that we used to have a desert camp in uh, a remote location and in sabia in the north of kuwait and we had an american couple that always used to come camping with us also big animal lovers and um the man's name was john and he also used to dress up as santa for children's parties in kuwait so i said to him one day john i need you to put your santa outfit on i'm going to take pictures of you with the camels and we'll have a, a nice christmas card but then when we started doing the photo shoot these camels were coming and the mother camel put her head on his shoulder and it looked like she was whispering into his ear and all the baby camels were crowding around him and after we finished the photo shoot i said john what did they say to you and then he started telling me and you'll have to read the book to find out what they told him but um they were telling him about their problems 
all the, the problems yeah. that they're having out in the desert. So these things, you know, are really happening. And um, the books are all available on my website, which um, you uh, listed it in your description of um, tonight's talk on your Instagram. It's on your post. It's um, you pay the letter U, P A Y dot T O slash Rashud Books. And also my Instagram is listed on your Instagram post. So if people would like to follow me, that would be wonderful. And on my books, um, all the proceeds go to pay for veterinary care for rescued animals from Touch of Hope Kuwait. That's good. Because the that's animals good. need help. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. a, a very kind thing to do, donate the entire book amount to the uh, animal sh uh, shelter. Claudia, I'm sure. Well, we're doing amazing work. <laughs> true, true. Claudia, I'm sure many people will be intrigued now to go and grab their copy of uh, what the camel said to Santa. Cla <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I, I keep mentioning that, uh, Claudia, you are a multifaceted personality knowing and working in different languages. How far that your volunteer experience, your volunteer work is influencing your writing? Right. Um, yes, it has influenced uh, a lot of my writing. I like to use my photojournalism as a platform to help um, promote and support people who are doing wonderful things um, in Kuwait. And I'm really fortunate to know people who are working so hard to help people, to help animals, to help the environment. And um, so I feel fortunate as a photojournalist that, you know, I can give them uh, some publicity and, and help them with their cause. And um, especially animals, I feel that, you know, we have to speak up for them. They're helpless. Um, they really are abused and, you know, not well treated often, especially the stray animals. We don't have any official um, society for the protection of animals here. It's all um, volunteer groups trying to do what they can. And so I find that, you know, there, I mean, there's so many needy people now. Um, so I, I try to help people and help animals at the same time and the environment. That's beautiful. And, and uh, Claudia, after talking to you, I feel you're not, not only a, a fabulous writer, but an amazing human being who, uh, who thinks a lot about uh -huh. uh, writing, animals, so many charity work you do. I'm glad that I got you on People's Voice. It's completely my pleasure to have you, Claudia. Oh, thank you so much. My pleasure to have chatted with you. And thanks to everyone who took away from their precious time to listen tonight. And um, take care. Wish you all the best. Th thank you, Cla Claudia. Claudia, anything last what you want to say to our budding writers who are going to embark their journey in the writing world? Anything? Oh, okay. yeah. I always have advice to give. Um, if you're uh, still in school, in high school or, or university, and if you have a chance to um, work on a school newspaper or to do an internship, go for it because you will learn so many valuable skills. And if you're a serious writer, um, don't just sit and wait for some flash of inspiration because you won't get very far. Writing is a job that you have to work at it the more you do it the easier it becomes. But um, the worst thing is to sit and stare at a blank screen. Just focus and think exactly what do I want to say? What do I want to tell my audience? And get some thoughts down and then work with those thoughts. And then another thing is I would just say always keep um, a notepad and a, and a pen. I know these are like prehistoric writing tools, but I still like to use them, you know? Like, but keep something or, or your phone where you can use your notepad. But um, if you do have a, a thought when you're driving, 
Um, when have something, you know, by your bedside table, you can't go to sleep and things are going round and round in your head. Um, scribble them down. And then when you get back to your computer, then again, you're going to have something to work with and you're not going to be staring at that blank screen. And then one last thing I would say is that if you write about something that you know and something that you care about, that's probably going to be your best writing. Absolutely, absolutely. I personally do follow for the advice of having notepad all the time with me, whether it's my wallet, my purse, my a laptop bag. Every time I carry the small notepad with me. Thank you so much, uh, Claudia, for enlightening all of us with your ideas, with the writing process, your lifestyle as an author, uh, how you pen down your thoughts. I'm sure I got. Uh, I am. Uh, I took so many uh, tips from you, and I'm sure our audience who are watching you and who will watch the recordings will benefit a lot from this interview. Thank you so much, Claudia. Oh, my pleasure, Nasima. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Thanks. So that was Claudia Farkas Al Roshud. I enjoyed a lot talking to her or knowing her experience. I'm sure you too. The next six days, we are gonna have authors from different, different uh, aspects of life, different writings, different uh, countries, different uh, things that they 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 love to do in their writing. So stay tuned, and if you have uh, anything to share about authors or writers, do DM to me, and I'll get back to you with the reply. Till then, have a nice evening. Take care. Bye bye.